Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery and confirmation of yet another really exciting habitable planet somewhere out there in our galaxy. Let's talk about this new discovery and welcome to What The Math. So in the last few years we've discovered quite a lot of various exoplanets and one of the main reasons for the new telescope known as TESS that orbits around our planet Earth and looks at every region for about 27 days every single time essentially is to try to discover as many habitable planets around our planet very close to the solar system as it possibly can. Now, in the last few years, it already has discovered several potential targets. We usually refer to them as TOI, or TESS Object of Interest. And in many of these cases, these planets were um, somewhat exciting, but not entirely as you would call them habitable. Basically, many planets it discovered so far are interesting, but we probably would not find habitable conditions around many of these objects. One of the more exciting findings that we talked about last year was this right here, Toy 270, which had a few interesting planets. But now we've discovered something even more exciting. Just as exciting as the TRAPPIST-1 system that was announced a few years ago. So essentially, this new system known as TOY-700 was discovered to have three exoplanets passing in front of the main star by looking at this for about 11 months. And it was recently confirmed with another telescope known as Spitzer Telescope that you can see right here that's about to end its mission. So essentially this discovery and this confirmation was one of the last things that it's going to do and actually one of the greatest ones as well. But what's interesting about these three planets discovered and confirmed is that they seem to be all very Earth-like. But on top of that, at least one of them is exceptionally Earth-like and is located in the so-called habitable zone where we do expect to have liquid water. Now, there's only a handful of exoplanets we've discovered so far that do potentially possess ability to maintain liquid water, and this now is one of them. Now, let's actually go and try to recreate some of these planetary parameters by using the Universe Sandbox. So first of all, the star itself, known as Toy 700, is what's known as a, a red dwarf. So basically, it's an M-type star. Now, these are normally not particularly hospitable to, well, anything really. A lot of these so-called red dwarfs are often what we call flare stars. The best example of the nearest flare star to us is actually the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri. You might remember a few years ago, we identified this planet known as Proxima b, the closest exoplanet to us that also seems to be in the habitable zone of the star known as Proxima Centauri. But the problem with this star system is that the star Proxima Centauri is what's known as a flare star. It essentially flares up and releases a tremendous amount of energy very, very frequently. So frequently, as a matter of fact, that all of the analysis we did so far suggests that this would strip the planet of any kind of atmosphere and possibly most of it, or even all of its water, basically making the planet a barren world with nothing on the surface. This is obviously very unfortunate, but it's also kind of how Mars lost its atmosphere as well. Except that our sun is not a flare star, but even in our own solar system, the solar effects can be quite profound. So, we usually try to identify M-type stars that are not flare stars, the ones that don't produce these powerful flares. The ones that can't really strip the planets of atmosphere and water. And in the 11 months of observation of Toy 700, the scientists have not seen a single flare. So, there might be some good news here. Now, usually M-type stars kind of lose this flare ability once they get much older, so maybe this is just a much older star system. Maybe this used to be a flare star system, we just don't really know yet. We've only identified this very recently. But then we have these three planets, and just from looking at them, you're not going to be able to actually see what's going on here because we haven't really analyzed them in thorough detail. So instead I created a very rough model of what this might be like. So first of all, these three planets are all somewhat different, and the closest one here is very similar in size to Earth. Here's Earth for comparison. The problem is that this planet is also much closer to the parent star and receives just as much radiation as Mercury does. So in that sense, it's very likely a very, very hot world, unless it has some strange atmosphere that prevents that from happening. But in terms of mass and in terms of size, it's extremely similar to our own planet. In that sense, it's probably very similar in density as well. 
We do need to investigate this a little bit more, but for now, it does have very unusual Earth-like properties. The second planet, planet C, is very different. It's very likely some sort of a gas uh, object or possibly something similar to a super-Earth, because both the size and the mass of this planet are much larger than planet Earth. But the density here is much lower. So this might be some sort of a super Earth or possibly a mini Neptune like object. We're not entirely sure yet, but it's probably also extremely hot because it is once again much closer to the star. And in some sense, um, it receives just as much radiation as Venus. So this could be technically what's known as a super Venus, basically a Venus like object, a lot of thick atmosphere, a lot of heat and a lot of uh, radiation here, but also not really exciting for prospects of life and liquid water. And so really it's this last object here, known as Toy 700D, that seems to be located on the outskirts of the so-called habitable zone where liquid water could technically exist. That gives us the most promise. So once again, this is just a simulation. We don't really know what this object might look like. We do, however, suspect that this object is tidally locked like every other planet around M-type stars. In other words, this is what we call the eyeball planet. It's always facing with the same side toward the star, allowing one side to become really hot, other side to become probably somewhat cold, and having this really unusual twilight region right here, where there might be quite a lot of uh, hospitable places for humans to survive, or even other life to develop. In comparison to Earth, this object is just a little bit more massive and a little bit larger, but this does suggest that its density is very Earth-like, and it might even contain very similar materials to what Earth contains. At the moment, more studies are needed to both identify the atmosphere and the composition of this planet, but for now, the suggestion is that it's basically one of the most Earth-like objects identified so far, and is definitely the most Earth-like planet that TESS was able to find in the last few months. Or basically since it started operating. So it's a very exciting object. It's definitely one of the most exciting planets discovered in the last few years, and it will probably have a lot of follow-up studies identifying what's happening here. But to help identify specifically what's happening on this planet, NASA has actually created at least 20 different models of what type of an object this might be. For example, they simulated what this object would produce in terms of the light coming off it, if this was what's known as an ocean-covered early Mars. Basically, a Mars-like planet that contains Mars-like features and produces light patterns from its atmosphere similar to what early Mars would produce. At the same time, they tried to create a model simulating what a modern Earth-like planet would look like if it was in this position. And most importantly, the scientists identified the light emissions that would be created by these types of planets if a certain type of atmosphere and a certain type of composition was present on this type of a planet. These models are actually meant for us to use other telescopes like James Webb Telescope that's going to be launched in 2021 to look at them again and to try to identify the signatures that the atmosphere might produce in order for us to see what's really happening on the surface and of course, um, in the atmosphere of these various planets. Now, at a distance of about 100 light years away from our planet, it's obviously not an object we're going to be visiting anytime soon, but being able to identify these planets for potential future exploration of humanity is really, really important for us. However, one thing is definitely certain about this planet. Whether it's an eyeball planet or some other unusual Mars-like planet that we've never seen before, it is definitely going to be extremely different from anything here on planet Earth. It is not going to be an Earth-like planet in the sense that it's an Earth replica. It might have habitable conditions, but because its star is so different from our own sun, and because basically the star system here is also very unique, it's going to be different in many different ways compared to planet Earth. But once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, that's really all we know. It's an exciting discovery. It's definitely one of those planets we're going to be talking about many times in the future. But unfortunately for now, that's all we know. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Subscribe if you still haven't. And potentially support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.